How a Fat Drunken Monk Beat the Demon Lord Hi everyone, All Things D&D &D is back with another story. Never underestimate the power of a monk and his ability to brew the finest of booze. So fill up a cup and listen to this fantastic story and make sure you tell us about your unique characters after listening to this. The party is all min-maxed to hell in preparation for what will surely be a terrifying campaign. Not a fan of going ham, so I go healer. Since the party definitely has damage covered, that leaves me open to try something different. The rest of the party consists of a fighter, a sorcerer, a rogue and a gunslinger. All they know is combat and work. I decided the party needed someone to help mellow it out and keep them in check with reality, to remind them what they're fighting for. Enter Father Nicoloso Abatangelo, cleric of Caden Kylian, the accidental slash drunken god who dabbles in alchemy on the side. Pretty much your typical medieval monk, brews beer and wine, studies alchemy, friendly to everyone. One of those generic priests that are always at the villages that you stop by for heals, just going about their day helping everyone and doing charity work. He's a big portly happy old man who just wanted everyone to be safe and have a good time. As one player put it, it's like Friar Tuck and Uncle Eero adopted a kid and replaced all the tea with beer. Nicoloso was an abbot, as his name would suggest, lived peacefully in a town that the party had stopped by. Their healer had died and they needed anyone who would help. Naturally, the large father agreed to tag along. His name is a mouthful, so they just call him Abbot, though the gunslinger insisted on calling him Saint Nick since his usual half-drunken state made his nose red. He constantly gifted the slinger with more powder and fancy bullets, and he was definitely fat enough to play the part. So the party sets off with their new healer in tow, as well as his rather large wagon full of supplies and tools. A quick mention about Abbot's wagon. Being a common man, he did not live out of a backpack like the rest of the party. He was reasonable and he had a wagon full of food and tools and various other things. However, when I say full, I mean full. This was a freaking Conestoga wagon which was designed to carry 6 tons of freight. He had an alchemy table, oven, hammer and anvil, forge, grindstone, spare robes and clothes for everyone, half a ton of food and water, another half a ton of beer, wine and whiskey, spinning wheel, spare wheels, butter churn, full distillery, more alchemical components than you could shake a 10 foot pole at and pretty much everything else the party could ever practically or impractically need. He even brought a pair of cows named Sasha and Maxima to walk behind it while the bulls Brashev and Vitaly pulled. Naturally, the party started to throw an absolute fit when they realized their travel speed would slow down to a blindingly fast 10 miles a day. Then the rogue realized that the wagon could still carry four more tons of crap and just about creamed herself when she thought of all the loot she could hide in it. The gunslinger was too busy preparing to enact all his wildest western fantasies on it to give a hoot about speed. The fighter and sorcerer were still a little iffy, but they got over it when Abbott put up hammocks so they could rest without even stopping. Eventually, after a one-sided vote, they let him keep it and they set off to their great adventure. Traveling turns into a twisted Oregon Trail from hell. Have cured dysentery no fewer than five times. Had to buy a hireling. Here lies Rick. He got the shits. Owl bears when we go hunting or leave the trail. Raids from tribes of goblins and orcs quickly learned that Abbott was most definitely not optimized for battle. An overweight monk who refused to wear armor and was definitely not fit for combat of any type whatsoever. However, he was a godsend when it came to supporting, especially after the gunslinger gave him a blunderbuss. Everyone was well rested, had more than enough healing, had alchemy vials and treated weapons. Every now and again would see the wonder of a bomb being lobbed through the air by the impromptu grenade launcher. While he didn't do a lot of damage by himself, he made sure the party's lives were significantly easier and that their loot was always safe, mostly because he stayed with the wagon to hide and heal slash create as needed. As such, the wagon became a bit of a priority for the party, and most of the tactics revolved around staying near it or keeping the enemy away from it. On one occasion in particular, an orc got past the party and made a dash for the wagon, the gunslinger fumbling a last minute shot as it jumped in. Abbott was in the middle of getting an alchemist firebomb ready when his unexpected guest entered and his blunderbuss was out of reach. Seeing no other option, he grabbed the vial grabbed another of kerosene, drained them both directly into his mouth. One pass constitution check later, the orc had a very bad time. The portly priest followed his flaming intruder out of the wagon, giving his best battle cry as flames shot everywhere, which caused the remaining orcs to decide that perhaps they should be somewhere else. The rest of the party turned and stared in awe. Abbott burped off as a puff of smoke left his nostrils, politely covered his mouth and apologized, then went back into his wagon. A few weeks later, the party is in a city, going after a lord doing some very unsavory things with the other planes. 
He knows we're coming, but we need to get into the keep, and no way in hell is the party gonna sneak in there. They needed someone unsuspecting who blends in. The party and table slowly turn and look at Abbott and me. Welp. Don't even need a disguise, just waddles his fat ass right into the keep. He talks with all the other priests, takes a visit to the king's wine cellar to make sure everything is as high quality as his god would like. Asked to sample some old brands just to make sure they're still good and aren't poisoned since divine protection and all that. Christmas came early, proceeds to get his wine snob on. He goes through the entire damn cellar, marking which ones are crap, which ones are good enough, even identifies a few poison ones. Throws out over half the wine in the cellar, so much it's turning the streams red. The Lord hears about this and demands to meet this priest. Abbott is dragged out of the cellars to the throne room to meet the Lord. By the time the abbot gets to the inner keep, he is absolutely sloshed. His blood alcohol content is so damn high a vampire would consider him a hard liquor. Barely able to stand by the time he meets the Lord. Time to talk with him. The extremely honest and nice monk is hammered and needs to stay undercover. Gods help me. Proceed to knock over a dozen charisma checks out of the park. Rich idiot gets a kick out of it. Tells his guards that there is a man who's dedicated to his work. Instantly promoted to cellar keeper. Demands Abbott start a new brand to help with his income. Develop a new wine, only using water that is holy water and blessed grapes. Name the brand Drunken Monk. Celebrate with more wine. The party now has a man on the inside. They can't poison the Lord. That would blow Abbott's cover. Can't assassinate him or charge in. Too many guards and the guy is paranoid. The party is out of ideas, but Abbott has a plan. We're gonna help him do his planer stuff. The party is skeptical, but Abbott convinces them to roll with it. Charisma. The party has no idea what the plan is, but they trust Saint Nick. Start running secret missions for the Lord. Abbott keeps bringing him wine and thwarting assassination attempts. The Lord loves this fat bastard. Weeks pass. The Lord has everything ready. He's going to bind himself with a demon in exchange for power and immortality. He throws a party with all his advisors and friends. Of course, the abbot is there supplying drinks and having a good time. He makes sure to give the Lord plenty of wine. The ritual starts. The party all looks at Abbott for the dramatic interference and Grandmaster plan. Abbott doesn't even leave his seat, just sits and watches. The party waits. The demonic circle starts glowing. Abbott just sips his wine. The party panics and goes into action mode. They start fighting their way through underlings and minions as the Lord starts to transform. Abbott just throws out enough heals to keep them alive, no buffs or alchemy. He doesn't seem bothered in the slightest. The Lord floats up into the air, burst of red light, then drops to the ground. Big old demon wings and horns. The party is losing their crap. The demon lord stands and gets ready to tear them apart. Then he starts screaming. The demon lord falls to the ground, vomiting profusely and yelling. Abbott is still calmly sitting in his chair. The fighting stops as everyone stares at the demon lord dying on the floor. His body breaks down and starts burning. Nobody knows what's going on. The party turns and stares at Saint Nick. Before the transformation, he gave the Lord three whole bottles of drunken monk. Once he became a demon, he counted as an evil outsider. The demon had drunk three whole bottles of distilled holy water and blessed grapes. Father Nicoloso Abitangelo grinned and looked back at the party as he took a sip. He never did appreciate good wine. Cheers to the good guys. What an awesome character. Please let us know what you think and comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel All Things D&D. Our next video will be posted in three days, so stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.